The information in this video is for spiritual practice only. It is intended to help support the viewer's spiritual journey and a more fulfilling and overall healthier experience of life. It is not personal counseling or advice and guarantees no specific outcomes. No individual should use the information in this video for self-diagnosis or treatment or as a replacement for medical, psychological, or practical care. In other words, this is spiritual practice. Always consult with an appropriate professional for specific advice and counsel for your individual situations as needed. Blessed be and enjoy. Mark Angelo Lyons, Drawing the Circle Productions. series, but it's a class workshop, call it what you want. Uh, number one, right, the first one, and uh, tonight is called the Gateway Goddesses. We're going to be looking at uh, the three, to me, primary graces. That The reason why they are called gateways is that they give access to other ones. We'll get there. Um, got a lot to cover tonight. It is a three-hour deal. We will be taking breaks. I could probably talk for three hours straight. I probably have talked for three hours straight. Uh, but it is my job not just to relay the information and the energy, but to scan the room and to know when it's time for a break. If, however, you find yourself needing to go to the bathroom, you know you are free to get up and go to the bathroom and come back. Um, but the nature of this work is sort of like trust. <laughs> it's sort of like it's all going to work out. I said my prayers. It's been a very busy day. Um, there's a blizzard of coming. <laughs> Yay. Mm -hmm. So I got everything done today that I could so that I could be prepared for tonight to give you my best. So let me start with saying that grace is something I was raised with, and so were all of you. If you ever said grace, over a meal, right? Hmm. The rhyming couplet that doesn't rhyme. God is great. God is good. Thank you, God, for this food. Yeah. It doesn't rhyme. Bad rhyming couplet. Bad, bad, bad <laughs> rhyming couplet. Wouldn't make for good spell work. But grace in and of itself is amorphous, uh, esoteric, in the sense that you kind of know what it is. A dancer can be graceful. Yes? Ballet in particular. They look like they float on air. But do you know how much work they have to do to look like they're floating on air? I've lived with dancers. They got ugly feet, man, because they just they twist it and point shoes and all of that. It's, it's torture. It's hard work. They just don't walk out of there day one. <laughs> no, it is hard. It's hard to cultivate just even the movement of grace. And that's in the physical world. The grace that we're talking about tonight, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, you could say that grace is a power beyond this world that we have access to sometimes. Um, and yet, there are those who say that grace is so constant that we've become used to it. We just don't even know it's there. Like, think of the grace that keeps planets from colliding into each other. Think about that for a minute. The grace that allows a plant to absorb carbon dioxide, photosynthesize it into oxygen, and that we happen to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, that symbiotic relationship. And nobody had to fill out a permit. <laughs> nobody had to audition for photosynthesis, right? That there, There's actually quite a bit of grace. How many times have you been in a place where you're about to say or do something that would be very, very painful, but something inside of you says, hey now, 
You sure you want to do that? That's grace. It's a love beyond this world. It is divine energy. It is, I, I remember reading when I was a teenager, grace is the action of God. So you can do the liturgical work. You can, you know, read the Bible and read all of these different mystics of all these different cultures. Grace usually comes into the picture sooner or later. I am a mystic, so this was just part. It's so funny, I call it the grace curriculum. Grace was just part of my spiritual curriculum over these past couple of years. It was something that I had my nose rubbed in. And we will certainly talk about that on and off throughout the entire series. This past two years, my life has gone through what I call cataclysmic change. Now, cataclysm, interestingly enough, is a neutral word. In other words, there's such a thing as positive cataclysm. And oftentimes, while you're going through it, it just seems horrible, like hell on earth. Like all the known is ripped away, and you have to deal with the unknown. Like you have to, uh, the grace of humility, well, that's a big one. You just have to know that you don't know. But then afterwards, when the dust settles, your feet plant again. You find your balance, you find your stability. You look over your shoulder and realize that it was all guided, that it was all perfect, that you did the best that you could, and that there was this force, not the force, a force, that was in a way not just guiding you, but insulating you as best as you could be insulated, protecting you, moving you through it. That's what grace is. So in my experience, I, I started investigating grace through a wonderful book called Defy Gravity by Carolyn Mace. You know me and Mace. I just adore her. I adore her work. And uh, she had also referred to grace quite a bit in her book, um, Entering the Castle, which is her experience and work with uh, St. Teresa of Avila. Fascinating book. Uh, all of her work is really so good. Um, she started off as a journalist and then became a medical intuitive and now she is this prime spiritual teacher. I love her. She's, she's a tough cookie and I, I need tough cookie teachers that way. Um, and it was through that book Defy Gravity that I really began to not just understand grace intellectually, which is pretty much all a workshop can do if it's just purely me talking about it, but I began to experience it. And as I experienced it, like any divine catalyst, my world started to fall apart. So you're getting the warning early that grace transforms you. And not always in the way or at the speed that you would like. And that's why we can put it in a song. We can write it in a holiday card, wishing you grace, I bless you with grace, all under grace, I wish that everything manifest under grace and in perfect ways for the highest good of all concern. And there's, that's actually a really, really wonderful thing to do. It's a wonderful thing to shoot for. But because it is a mystical power, grace is a mystical substance, if you will, it works in ways that defies human reason and logic. And so it can be very confusing. It can be very confounding. And let's say you wanted to be the best you that you could be, right? Be all that you can be. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to heal. I'm going to become. I'm going to follow my spiritual path. How exciting is that? Well, in order to do that, you're going to have to deal with your fears. You're going to have to deal with your self-imposed as well as societally imposed limitations. Well, how are you going to do that if you don't know what they are? Grace can bring that stuff up, but it just doesn't drop you down in the middle of it. It carves for you a way through that is unique to your personal path. So this is not a oh, grace workshop. <laughs> it's about working with, becoming a channel for, becoming an extension of, and a routing system of a divine substance that comes with many flavors and many shades, but there's really only one grace. You could call it the love of God, the love of spirit, the one. Words at a certain point fall away because you can find 
the idea of grace expressed in pretty much every mystical spiritual tradition on planet Earth, though they may not call it grace. Right? So my work over these next, oh my God, eight weeks, God help us all, mm -hmm. is to certainly share my own experiences with it, but also provide experience for it. One thing I can tell you about grace for sure is you can't demand it. It doesn't come because you want it to. It comes because you open yourself to it. Because you make yourself available. Because you are willing to do whatever is necessary to experience grace. That there are no guarantees that just because you say a prayer. You know, I pick on Charmed a lot. I love that show. I still love that show. But the way that they said the power of three spell, I joke about it a lot. The power of three will set us free. The power of three will set us free. And the demon explodes. It's like, girl, put a little juice into that. You juice it up a little bit. That the words of the prayers, every week, I'm going to give you prayers that I use, that you are free to monkey with, to shift, to move around, to play with. Because the prayers that come to me are for me, but I can't bring through your prayer, or yours or yours or yours. But what I can do is pray, invoke, create a space so that grace can flow, so that you can catch a whiff of it, and find your own ways in your own words. And that's why, remember, at core, I am a witch. I do not teach anything unless it works for me. I do not share mystical truth for the fun of it. I do it because when you come across a mystical truth, and this might not be true for everyone, there is a compulsion to share it. Not just because it sounds good, or it makes sense, or it's reasonable, but because it ignites something in you. Something that was dormant wakes up. You experience not just life situations differently, although that may be true. You have a deeper experience of your own life force, of the oneness, of the divine. And it closes the gap, little by little by little, between what you think of, of what you think of as yourself and what you think of as the divine, because there is no separation. You are divine. You are divine. But just oh, I'm divine. <laughs> Thirty dollars. Oh, oh, I'm divine. Thank you so much, Mark. That stays up here. The ability to take grace and integrate it into every cell in your body. To walk grace, to talk grace. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Oh, I'll say, oh yeah, I'll walk grace, I'll talk grace. Yeah? What about when somebody lies to you? What about when there's a betrayal? What about if there's a financial issue? What if there's a health issue? What if there's a political thing going on? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? That grace is not event specific. Only good for Sunday mornings with a candle. <laughs> <laughs> Only good for when things are going well. Oh, it's the grace of when things are already good. Ah, oh. ow. I'm sorry, gratitude's a very powerful thing, but it almost doesn't count when the larder is full. Still, you should be grateful for what you have. Oh, there's food in the fridge, and I am grateful for that. But can you be grateful when the larder is empty? That's when gratitude becomes a true power. And grace is like that, too. So the best part about this for me is that I just have to teach what I know and create an experience that you either, you know, I can't control whether you experience these graces directly. Um, but I can give you enough of it that if you keep at it, you will experience grace. And what you do outside of these walls is none of my business.